Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. Whatever time it is that you're joining me for this video, thanks once again for clicking on the Penboy Roy Fountain Pen Review channel. The subject of today's video is the Conklin Durograph Fountain Pen. in the past and went over the Conklin brand history several times, so if you would like more detailed information such as dates and whatnot, check out those reviews. As for the Durograph, just know that the Durograph was first initially released by the original Conklin brand in the year 1923. Later on, in the year 2014, it was re-released by Yaffa Brands, but this time instead of being a lever filler, it was a cartridge converter filler. That's all I have for the background information. Moving on to the neutral zone, those elements about the pen that are either good or bad, or can be good or bad, depending on you. The nib is a proprietary stainless steel nib with the Conklin branding enclosed in an oval plated in gold. The rest of the nib is polished steel. The nib shown here is a fine as indicated on the side of the nib. The feed is a standard cheapy plastic feed. The nib and feed are friction fit into an unscrewable nib unit housing that is interchangeable with other Conklin or Monteverdi pens. It screws into a black concave beer bottle shaped section. The grip threads are a metal assembly epoxied into the inside of the grip and screws into the acrylic threads of the barrel. The barrel has threads on the outside for capping. The rest of the barrel is an orange cracked acrylic that is a straight tube ending with a metal ring that separates itself with the end finial, which is a slightly tapering cylinder with a flat bottom. The cap is a solid black cap with a flat topped finial like in the end finial. It's branded with Conklin and the date that the brand was established. The clip is a tapering metal clip with a bulb at the end. The center band is a simple wedding band style center band with Conklin laser engraved on the front and on the rear, three crescents on both sides of the word Duragraph. The pen was packaged in the standard blue Conklin sleeve with the fake leather clamshell box inside that holds the pen, some ink cartridges, and literature on the warranty and brand. Nothing new. That's all I have for the neutral zone. Moving on to the good. Those elements about the pen that are good. I've covered a lot of Conklin pens. In those past reviews, I've covered fine nibs, medium nibs, the previous sucky Omniflex nib, and the newly unsucked Omniflex nib. There's no real news with the way the nib on this pen writes. This is a standard non-flex fine nib. I decided that I've gushed over the new Omniflex nibs enough that the standard nibs deserve some love as well. These nibs on the Conklin pens are not standard number six size nibs. They are actually a touch wider in the shoulders. However, having said that, I find that the line width is on par with the standard Eurofine nib. The nib is smooth and does a good job laying down a nice wet, but not too wet line. The nib is slightly bouncy, which I find enjoyable. The balance of the pen is decent when unposted, and I think is best when used unposted. When posted, this pen becomes super long, being that the cap does not post very deeply. I think posting it is somewhat impractical. It's about as practical as trying to grill spaghetti. While it's not entirely back-weighted, the length is noticeable. I also love the aesthetic of the pen. It's a good-looking pen with a classy vintage look about it. This model is the Orange Knights, and it's perfect for Halloween. That's all I have for the good. Moving on to the bad. Let's talk coin. This pen has an MSRP of $65. With retailers here in the US, it can be had for $51.95. That's 52 bucks for a cast acrylic fountain pen with a steel nib. For me, that is not a bad deal at all. With the way it writes, I have no complaints. So that's all I have for the bad. Moving on to the ugly. Those elements about the pen that should not be, but are. 
Okay, so when it comes to the Conklin Durograph, there is very few things to complain about. I can only think of one thing, and it doesn't even affect the writing experience, and that's in the finial. There is logo and branding on top of the finial, and it is never straight. It's always crooked, just by a little bit, and it drives me absolutely nuts. You know why it drives me nuts? Is the fact that it's made by Yaffa Brands. Guess what Yaffa Brands owns? They own Monteverde. Guess what Monteverde makes? A tool pen. Guess what's in a tool pen? That's right, a level. It's a little green pill with a bubble. When the bubble's in the middle, it means whatever it is that you're putting it on top of is level. Why not use it so that way the finial doesn't drive weirdos like me crazy? That's all I have for the ugly. It's high noon, decision making time. Should you or should you not pull the trigger on the Conklin Duragraph fountain pen? I know I went off on a little bit of a tangent in the ugly regarding the finial. But despite that, I have to say when it comes to the Conklin Duragraph, this is one of those pens that are just really not that expensive, but offers so much. It's a cast acrylic pen, it comes with a converter, it has a steel nib, and the steel nibs, in my opinion, have been writing pretty consistently and well. To me, this pen is an essential pen for the further spread of the fountain pen virus. Why is that, you ask? Good question. Because it bridges the gap between cheap injection molded plastic pens and high-priced acrylic pens that are oftentimes grail pens for many and out of reach for them. So, pull the trigger on this pen. For what you're getting, you're not overpaying, and you will be happy with it. This is the next step in fountain pen virus evolution. That was my review of the Conklin Durograph fountain pen. I hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching. Love you guys. Be well, be safe.